Monday to you, my children! You all remember Jason Takes Manhattan, right? How it's a movie where he spends more time on a boat than in New York? Well, once again, it's comic books to the rescue. Or in this case, to the slaughter. On New Year's Eve entering 2016, a maniac slasher appeared in New York City and murdered everyone in Times Square. So, you know, one more horrible thing that happened in 2016. Harry the Maniac, as he's dubbed, continues on his spree. Everyone prepares to fight him. The city government, the federal government, everyone is lining up to finally bring down such a monstrous being as Harry. And four years later, well, they have been less than successful. In fact, Harry has just become a part of everyday life in the city. A tragedy to be sure, but nobody can stop him. And so he keeps on killing and victim blaming occurs. What were you doing out late at night? Maybe you wanted a machete in your back. That sort of thing. I mean, enough with the brutal murders. What people really want to hear about is the new driverless subway trains. So after four years, are the cops even doing anything to try to stop Harry? Well, yes and no. Gina Green volunteers to head up the Maniac Task Force, which is pretty much just her. The budget for it got slashed after the second year, and the position is seen as a joke. The place you dump officers as a punishment, since nobody has been able to take down Harry, or even figure out a pattern to his behavior. Gina has her own theories, which she shares with the only other person on the task force. Zelda Pettibone, an alcoholic cop who was punished for turning in a cop who murdered a boy. She sees Harry as divine punishment on the city, and there's nothing they can do about him. But Gina having been a victim of Harry's back when he was a summer camp slasher, is determined to finally stop him. Admittedly, Zelda does want to stop him too, but there's nothing they can do. The only thing they do know about Harry is that he avoids an area around 81st and Central Park West. No one can figure out why, but that doesn't really matter, because Harry has begun his next rampage. Right on the new automated train! Meanwhile, our heroines go to meet Gardner Birnbaum, an author who wrote the definitive book on the maniac and made a killing off of it! There's not much that isn't in the book already, save for material he's reserving for the next book, but he does say that Harry, while immune to bullets and pain, is vulnerable to fire. The police having almost killed him in a tenement building that lit up. It wasn't in the papers, because the city thought it would look bad to catch Harry and then let him get away. Word of Harry on the train is already out, and the mayor is ready to sacrifice everyone on it in order to keep Harry contained and the trains continuing to run. With no other choice, Gina and Zelda elect to get on the train themselves to try to stop Harry. They are unsuccessful, though they do manage to save two children and set Harry on fire. Since Harry fled the train, the mayor decides to let the two be blamed for trapping the people on it as a form of punishment to them for disobeying orders. They can't just be fired since they did rescue two children, one of whom, Lena, noticed at one point that when the train passed the Natural History Museum, Harry paused. And indeed, inside of that museum, there happens to be a mask that resembles Harry's. There's also quite a bit of social satire at play in the story, just like the best of horror. And like the best of horror, there's certainly no end to the blood and guts. <laughs>